all over the world were seeing the devastating impact of this invisible killer. And so tonight, I want to update you on the latest steps that we're taking to fight the disease and what you can do. It won't come up the dale, said the woman outside the paper shop. She must have heard about the magic COVID repelling barrier at Harpley Bank, I thought. It's just the media hyping it all up. She continued with a confidence that made me wonder for a moment if she had inside knowledge on the virus that was about to change the world. That morning, as I sat down with my coffee, I made a shopping list after turning down the volume on the telly. Piers Morgan's face was puce with rage. He's always upset about something. Graphics bounced around on the screen telling us the death toll in Italy before it cuts to the Prime Minister. Boris didn't seem too bothered. I was starting to worry. My husband's a nurse, so naturally I was concerned about him going to work. But this morning I was actually more anxious about not being able to buy enough corned beef. I don't even like the stuff. What would I want with four tins of corned beef? If this is the end of civilization as we know it, surely I can rustle up a meal without resorting to corned beef. There's talk of toilet roll shortages and rationing. Why is everyone queuing outside Morrison's at six in the morning for bloody bock roll? Work called. They're letting everyone go. There was talk of something called furlough, which I've never heard of. How do I tell Martin? He's got enough on his plate at the hospital. To slow the spread. I put on the news again. They're going to build a bloody great big hospital in London. It's going to be so big, they're describing it in the size of the number of football pitches. I'm none the wiser. What do I know about football pitches? Well, back to the shopping. I wonder if the post office sells corned beef.